السلام عليكم شباب تمنياتي للجميع بالصحة والسلامة والأمان Our lecture today is guide in neurological examination How to examine the patient neurologically The following scheme of examination should be applied So we have a scheme in examination of the patient neurologically Should be applied, we have steps starting with general neurological examination Then cranial nerve examination very important for you then motor system examination sensory system examination and cerebellar system examination so starting with the examination of the patient general neurological examination by examining the consciousness of the patient starting by examination of the consciousness of the patient whether he is fully conscious or he is drowsy or stuporous or he is comatose patient so you have to decide the level of consciousness of the patient number two examination of the mental state mental state of the patient and examination for mental state need to examine the orientation of the patient whether he is oriented or not oriented for the time for the place for the person you know the time you know whether he's in the hospital or he's in the home and you know the person around him Disorientation to time typically occurs before disorientation to place or person. This is generally. Disorientation to self is typically a sign of psychiatric disease. Then after we examine the orientation regarding the mental state, we have to examine the memory of the patient. Examining for immediate memory, recent memory, then remote memory. Then number three, we have to examine the higher intellectual function which include the thinking general knowledge judgment insight reasoning and abstraction judgment or الحكم insight البصيرة reasoning المنطق والتجريد abstraction تجريد proverb similarity and dissimilarity يعني الأمثال تشابه الاختلاف then you have to examine the attention and concentration by doing digit span or so we'll test 100 minus 7 this is for examination of concentration and attention so starting with the uh, mental state examination you have to examine for the orientation memory higher intellectual function and attention number c a b c in examination of the patient generally or examination of the speech it's very important to examine the speech this is part of general neurological examination before you start examining the speech you have to know whether the patient is right-handed or left-handed because as we know we have what we call the dominant hemisphere the dominant hemisphere the dominant hemisphere which is hemisphere who contain the speech center speech center the broca area or wernicke area in most of the right-handed people in most of right-handed people the dominant hemisphere is on the left side and in some of the left-handed people the dominant hemisphere also on the left side فلذلك من عندنا stroke or CVA مثلا right-sided CVA is more serious than left-sided CVA because right-sided CVA معناته the speech center is affected لذلك رح يصير عندنا dysphasia and other difficulty in speech so to start examining the speech you have to know the handedness of the patient and to decide whether the patient is mute, خاف هو mute patient مع عنده speech disorders, mute يعني جاي للدنيا وما يسمع من ما يجيس ما يسمع راح ما يسمع وما يحكي فيسمو deaf and mute or has difficulty of phonation مثلا أو عنده articulation difficulty in articulation or disorder in language. So this is very important before examination of the speech. Number three, you have if the patient is dysarthria, and then to know the type of dysarthria whether he has nasal quality, he has a pseudo bulbar, he has a scanning speech, he has a staccato speech. Scanning had a region, Khasnam bil cerebellar lesion. Rahan shuv doil patients, it is scanning speech. Yitawul hal jumla, tabiha fawasal. Then, number four, Nibdi Nobanov has an examination with the speech. And if the patient has dysphagia, the following sequence of examination should be applied. We have to start with the examination of the comprehension, then examining for fluency of the patient, then examining for the naming of subject or objects, not the 
يعني مثلا مجموعة أشياء ويسوي لها النيمينج مثلا تعطي فد خاشوقة مثلا قلم مثلا ورقة مثلا شخاطة شوف يعرف أسماءهن فإذا عشان عنده difficulty in naming of objects معناته عنده nominal dysphasia مثلا you have to examine for readings يقدر يقرأ you have to examine for writing يقدر يكتب and you have to examine the repetition of spoken speech اللي هو الدكتيشن يعني تعطي جمل هو يردد وراء These are the steps in the examination of the speech. It is part of general neurological examination. So number one is consciousness, mental state, speech, and finally examination for signs of meningeal irritation. So if the patient have meningeal irritation, for example, he has meningitis or he has a subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, he may have a neck stiffness, neck stiffness. This is stiff neck. You have to examine and looking for a stiff neck, but it's very difficult and causing pain when you're moving the head. I would go and measure your shin on the anterior part of the chest. Mata and the neck stiffness. Nafhas aydan for Koenig sign and Brodinski sign. Koenig sign and Brodinski sign. How we examine for Koenig sign? Koenig sign examination. Doing by lying the patient flat on the bed, then. Knee is flexed in 90 degree. The hip is flexed to 90 degree as well. Then extension of the knee is painful or limited in extension. So when it happens, we like extension. You should elicit pain or limitation of extension. Spasm is said. No, no, spasm. Spasm. At the Koenig sign is positive, and the other meningeal irritation. Oh, Brodinski sign. Come on, we'll have fun. So we. And so passive flexion of the neck, passive flexion of the neck, for I said sudden hip and knee flexion, sudden hip and knee flexion. Then go Brodinski sign positive, Brodinski sign positive. Now, cranial nerve examination. 